The gold-silver ratio is probably the second most often question that I get. And really, it's a way to track you know, which metal is doing what relative to the other one. So the gold-silver ratio is how many ounces of silver by an ounce of gold. When I called the bottom in the silver market, it was 80 to 1. So it took 80 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. So if it's anything less than that, silver is doing better than gold. If it's anything above that, gold's doing better than silver. So since the bull market started, we've seen that ratio basically trend down, which means silver has outperformed gold. Although during a cycle when the financial debacle was really manifest in October, November 2008, the ratio on pa in paper terms shot up to about 90, very temporarily spike high, and then it dropped back down. In real terms, it really didn't get that high because there was a very big demand for physical silver uh, in investment form in the retail market. So there were huge spreads between what you could see it for in the futures exchange and what you actually had to pay for it. But I don't want to go into this too deeply. It basically is a way to track one versus the other. And there's actually a way to trade the ratio, which I do, but it's not easy because especially silver being so volatile. Right now, basically, I think the best thing to know is that when I count the bull market starting, uh, silver has outperformed, and it's at a 55 to 1 ratio. If you go from 2000 and give them the same starting line, silver still outperformed gold uh, from the beginning of the gold bull market at 252 the ounce. Again, I think you should own both, um, but I think if you have gold only and you're gold-centric, uh, I think you kind of owe it to yourself to have some silver in your portfolio. There's been, um, you know, people have asked me over the years at these type of events, you know, what I thought, and I'm very consistent in that, and I, get, I see them again a year or two later, and they are, you know, I'll call them gold-only people, and I suggest they might take some of that gold and trade some of that gold for silver, and, you know, they come up to me, you know, later and say, geez, I'm glad I did, you know, I'm not much of a silver guy, but a silver lady, but I decided to do it and I gave it to my, you know, grandkids, but I'm really happy I did it and that type of thing. So that's very gratifying to me, but uh, that's all it is. Again, where do I think it's going to go? I think it'll continue to favor silver. I think it's probably going to get down probably to the, what I call the classic or monetary ratio, 15 or 16 to 1, and could go as low as 10 to 1 uh, on a in a short amount of time, you know, that uh, manic panic, euphoric part of the market that we just discussed earlier, I don't think it would stay at a 10 to 1 ratio for years upon years. Although I must state that the dynamics for silver are far superior to gold for a lot of reasons. So I'd like to do a thought experiment for our viewers, if I might. So here goes the thought experiment. If we think about it and we take all of the gold off of the earth right now and it's gone, what would change? And the answer is not really very much. There'd be a lot of wedding rings and gold chains and bracelets missing. So in other words, there'd be no jewelry. There'd be a lot of gold bugs like me that'd be upset because their money's gone. But not, would, not much functionally would change in the world. Well, now let's do that same thought experiment with silver, and let's take all the silver off the planet instantaneously. Where would we be? We wouldn't be able to do this video. You wouldn't be sitting with a laptop in front of you. My BlackBerry wouldn't work. In fact, no communication system would work. We wouldn't have the ability to distribute electricity. Basically, we go back to the Stone Age. So silver, as far as its usefulness and its important, it's the indispensable metal. The more advanced a society becomes, the more reliant they are on silver on a per capita basis. China had the per capita use of silver at 170th the Western Hemisphere a decade ago. Next year, they will sell more cell phones in China than the rest of the world combined. They're actually out buying cars in China versus the US. They're moving very rapidly into a high-tech society. Now, are they meeting the same demand for silver per person that's in the Western Hemisphere in Europe? No, but they're getting there, and that's the point. So I often get asked about silver investing and silver investors, and I guess it depends upon how you define the term. Because in a way, anyone that has any type of silver device that they don't even think about, for example, a laptop, is a silver investor in a very minuscule scale. 
I don't count them as silver investors, of course, but I'm just making the point that it is a very important metal. And I'm not saying that others are not, but what I am saying is that from a high-tech perspective, for a high rapid communication, telecommunication, satellites, that type of thing, silver is imperative. The only substitutes for silver in those applications are platinum and palladium. And if that were the case, and there were no silver, and you had to substitute platinum and palladium for the communication system, as an example, it would exist, but it would exist at a huge expense, and it'd be far, far smaller than the one that exists now. So obviously I'm bullish on silver. Everybody that knows me knows that I am, but I wanted to just leave everyone with that thought experiment, and the next time that they're out there walking in their daily lives, Think about how many times you encounter silver in your daily life. It's quite phenomenal.